give an opening statement and then open the floor for some questions. Okay. Well, I appreciate everybody being here today. Obviously, I think across the country, this is a real exciting week for everybody involved with college baseball. And, you know, in the days, you used to get to scrimmage other teams and, uh, and play other people, and you're no longer allowed to do that by NCAA rules. So I think one of the first things that happens is you get tired of playing each other. Your pitchers hire to pitch their own hitters and vice versa. And I'm sure everybody feels the same way we do. We're looking forward to playing somebody in a different colored jersey, having an opportunity to compete and and take the first step forward in what we hope will be a really successful season and a great journey. Uh, I'd like to just open with a couple injury updates. Some of you are probably aware we had been completely injury free up until the final weekend of inter squad games, and we did suffer two really serious injuries. Uh, Brandon Johnson, the sophomore pitcher from Las Vegas, tore a ligament in his elbow on Friday in our inter squad game. He'll have surgery spring break with Dr. Andrews in, in Alabama. Um, we're confident that he will return 100%. And, and he not only will miss the 2016 season, most likely he'll miss 2017 season as well because that's a 15-month rehab program. So, it's, so that's really devastating news for our team and for Brandon. And, and then Sean Rakowski, who was our Saturday starter last year, was making a 1-6-3 double play feed on Sunday and tripped and broke his thumb and fractured his thumb, and uh, he'll have surgery Friday. We actually had 11 scouts in to watch him pitch on Sunday, and uh, he will also be out for the 2016 season as that's a three- to six-month rehab process once he gets in there and, and, and Dr. Dr. Lithicum is able to repair the, the broken bone with a plate or pins, whatever's needed. Uh, the only other significant injury that we have is Marcus Wheeler will be limited this weekend. We are seeing a left-handed starter at Arkansas Little Rock. He would have been the DH. He has a slight hamstring pull that he pulled Sunday, so he'll be limited to pinch hitting duty. But other than that, everybody else is healthy and uh, ready to go. Uh, I feel really good about our roster. In 2014, uh, we were obviously in the top 25 and went to the Louisville Regional. and. We had six players drafted, which tied for the third most in the country out of the 300 Division I teams. We were really young last year. You can look at the young men that are sitting up here today. Even the juniors are one- and two-year starters as they head into their third season at KU. And traditionally, we've had our best teams when we've had juniors and seniors. And that's certainly the case this year. We're going to return our starting catcher, our starting shortstop, our starting second baseman, and our starting center fielder, which is a pretty good nucleus to begin with. And then obviously Ben Corral returns, who was our Friday starter and the Big 12 newcomer of the year. So we're excited about the year. Um, we've obviously got a really challenging schedule. We're looking forward to uh, not only the opening weekend, but going to the Pac-12 Big 12 Challenge and then facing BYU at home, and then heading on down to play Stanford, uh, the perennial national power that, that they've been for the last 30 years. So the weather has been incredible. In the 14 years I've been here, we've only been inside one day, and that was last Saturday. Um, We've been outside every single day, which is unheard of. We've actually opened our season before and never been outside. So we feel good about where we're at. Uh, I think we're prepared to play, and right now we're really excited to get going. So with that being said, I'll open up to any questions, and I'll turn it over to the young men. Injuries were such a, a struggle for you guys last year. How disheartening is it to make it through all of camp and then in the last week suffer two serious injuries? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubts. I mean, it's a huge setback for us. I mean, a year ago, we lost John Hander, who was our Tuesday starter as a freshman, and we expected him to start on Tuesday, and we never recovered from it. Uh, we're hopeful that, that the progress that some of our young guys have made that we'll be able to survive the loss of Rakowski. Uh, it's, it's, you know, one of the great things that we try to do is we try to preach next man up mentality here and don't make any excuses. It's an open an opportunity for Blake Wyman that uh, – to get back in the rotation is going to open the opportunity for the freshman Zach LeBon, and it'll give somebody else an opportunity moving forward, and that's how we're going to look at it. We're going to move on to the best we can with the guys we have. What does the pitching rotation coach look like right now? Well, and it's it's a little bit different this week in, uh, in that we're only playing one game, then we'll come on and play Monday, Tuesday. And, you know, we've had a lot of really good things happen to division student athletes in the last year with the cost of attendance of the football, basketball guys are getting the full meals for all athletes, whether they're on scholarship or not. And the O'Bannon lawsuit that pays all those guys $1,000 a season for playing. And, 
you know, Dr. Z asked us all to c cancel one trip or play one less road trip, and I was more than willing to do so for what the program's given back to our student athletes in the sport of baseball. So we were actually supposed to open in Florida. So that's the reason why you see the kind of screwy opening that we have. It eliminated that trip. It made a huge cost savings to help the athletic department with all those upgraded costs. Um, as we move into the thing, uh, Ben's going to pitch on Friday night. John Hander will pitch on Saturday. And then the freshman Jackson Goddard will pitch on Sunday right now. And then obviously we'll make adjustments as, as performance-based happens. And then we'll use them on Tuesday and we'll use Le Bon on Tuesday. Uh, so I feel really good about our, about our rotation. It's the deepest we've been maybe since I've been here. It's definitely the deepest our bullpen's been. We've usually had one really good guy on the back end. I think we've had, obviously we've had the national closer of the year and the Big 12 closer of the year three times since I've been here. But uh, not only did we return Stephen Velines, uh, Sam Gilbert's back as a senior that's got outstanding stuff. And we're really excited about him. We used LeBon at the back end of the bullpen. We can use Wyman left on left out of the bullpen. It's the deepest we've been in the bullpen. Ryan Ralston, the sophomore, has made really good progress too. We just got to get out and see him do it against somebody else in a different colored jersey. But he's made remarkable progress from his freshman year. Give you the opportunity that if the starters need a little bit quicker hook, that you're okay this year. I know there have been years where Coach, you're trying to get those guys through eight no matter what, but is that not the case this year? You were in our staff meeting today, weren't you? Okay. <laughs> we actually had that very discussion today in our, in our staff meeting. Uh, it's certainly the case. The strength of our team, other than Ben on Friday night, is our bullpen. And... Our intention is, is to use our bullpen very similar to what the, uh, the Royals have done the last couple years with great success. You also got to have the right people if you're going to do that. And we think we have guys that can be effective in those roles. But that's the strength of our bullpen. And if guys aren't getting it done on the starting role, we're going to go to the bullpen early. Uh, are you going to set any major limitations on pitch count uh, yeah. early on and throughout the season for that matter? Well, we try. We never run guys more than 120 pitches. We try to keep it right around 100 is a normal thing. This open weekend, Ben will be on, on, on 75, 85 pitches of what he'll be on the opening weekend, and that'll be the case through Arizona as well. Most of our guys probably are going to go five, six innings max based on pitch counts. What's it going to be like playing home games in February here? Well, thank goodness for the 14-day forecast, huh? I mean, we're thrilled that it's supposed to be in the 50s next week, and we're actually going to Arizona on the 10-day forecast. This is gorgeous on the weekend. Uh, my schedule next year, we actually open the first two weekends at home. So I'm hopeful that the global warning is taking effect in Lawrence, Kansas. <laughs> you guys aren't buying that one, are you? Coach, uh, Kraut had such a strong year last year. Um, do you see even, even more from him this year coming? Yeah, I really do. I, I, I think first off is he's got great mental makeup and he's got great work ethic and he has a really high baseball IQ. He understands how to pitch, he understands how to set hitters up, he understands how to finish hitters and you know despite coming in as the California JC pitcher of the year, he had a rough first month a year ago where he let some leads get away in the sixth inning that he had uh, but he got better as the year went on and I'm expecting him to take another up this year. Uh, Coach, any out of conference games that really stick out that could be really important? Well, I think any time you're trying to make the NCAA tournament, which is our goal, uh, you have to have some signature wins on your schedule. Certainly we're going to get a chance to open up with Oregon State. They got every single vote but one to win the Pac-12 Big 12 or the Pac-12 championship. They are the defending conference champions. They're ranked fifth in the country. If we could win one of those two games, it's a start on those signature wins. Stanford's the same way. Uh, they've got some injury issues on their staff. They lost all three of their starting pitchers to Tommy John last year during the course of the year. Two of them projected first rounders. Okay, so uh, those are obviously signature wins. And one of the great things about being in the Midwest is our Tuesday games. Missouri State was second in the Missouri Valley last year. Wichita State had a bad year, but traditionally they've been a good program. And then obviously we get to play Creighton to finish second in the Big East. So those are six six quality midweek games that we have on our schedule. They're all on TV as well. Coach, you're losing about 50% of your power offense from last year. Are you going to try to straight replace that, or are you just looking at a new offensive game plan? Yeah, well, there's no doubts. We lost the two most physical guys in our lineup. Uh, I think that, you know, we, we led the Big 12 in hitting, I think, in 2006 when Richie was a, was on a, on that team when we won the tournament. Um, 
this might be the deepest we've been one through nine since uh, since that club played. Uh, we really like our lineup from top to bottom. And last year we struggled at the bottom end of our lineup. This year we don't think we have any weaknesses. Uh, we also have a nice combination of right-hand hitters, left-hand hitters. From a power standpoint, we're probably not going to hit as many home runs as we did last year. Owen Taylor has got a chance to be a really physical guy. He's made a huge step forward, and he's got outstanding power. If he can provide some pop in the middle of that lineup and Kobe Wright and Afner and Tinsley, they all hit over 300, we'll be fine with the style of baseball that we play. Just to follow up on, on emulating the Royals in the bullpen, is that something that you've kind of, a philosophy you've taken on watching in the last couple of years, or is that a personnel matter that you just think having a bullpen? I think that's a matter of not losing two guys to the draft, which is what happened to us three years in a row, uh, and having enough depth to be able to emulate that bullpen. I find it really unique uh, how the swing in baseball is going right now with the power arms and the bullpen. You look at the Yankees, and they had one of the best bullpens in baseball, and they go trade for Donis Chapman. So now you can make an argument that they've got three of the best clo closers in baseball on the same team. Uh, people are copying the Royals. I mean, one of the things that we've done is we usually are second in our league and sacrifice bunts behind the University of Texas, and they play in a huge ballpark. But we put the ball on the ground. Uh, Richie's really aggressive trying to steal bases. Uh, we try to steal third base, probably more than we steal second base. So some of those changes that are happening in the game, I think, are already in the system and the style that we play. Per certainly our bullpen, it's a personnel issue. We finally got guys we think can get it done. Coach, what are they doing to your field out there in the left field? We're putting a roof and uh, and new turf in, in left field cages. So there'll be five cages out there that'll be all turfed with a roof and with lights. It'll be a great upgrade for us, developing our hitters. Out of all the freshmen pitchers from last year, who's coming the farthest in the offseason? You know what? I'll let Coach Graves answer that question, OK? I, 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 off the top of my head, I would say that Ralston, Ryan Ralston's made the most progress. He came in as a really high profile recruit and really struggled throwing strikes. And he got better as the summer went on. And I think he's made really good progress during the course of the fall. And he's done a great job with his body. You might know he's one of the top high school football players in America. Uh, now he looks like a baseball player on, on the field. And it's, it's exciting to watch. The upside of him is exciting to watch. And then we redshirted a guy last year, Zach LeBond, that's going to be 88 to 94. And he's, he's a three-pitch mix guy. He's actually got a really good breaking ball and a good changeup. And I'm really excited about the potential that he has as well as his Richard freshman year. Jackson, Jackson Goddard, you guys will really like. Uh, I think in the 14 years I've been here, he's the top freshman pitcher that's come on our campus in my tenure. And you know, we were lucky enough to have another young man make the big leagues last year, Colton Murray with the Phillies when he got called up in August. Um, Jackson Goddard's got a chance to ever have a, have a really good career in this game. In addition to Goddard, you, you said whenever you uh, the recruiting class was uh, finished that it was one of the best in your 22 years. Have, have they lived up to that expectation you had for them from what you've seen so far? Yeah, they really have. Um, I also really like this junior class that's sitting here, too. Those guys have been special since they got here. Uh, you know, just, just going around the, the, the infield a little bit, David Kiriaki uh, will – get a lot of playing time at third base. He's a left-handed hitter that knows how to hit, and he has really good at bats. He's a good, solid defensive player. Rudy Carey had Tommy John surgery after the state championship game in Arizona last year. He's the fastest guy in the field. And uh, he's obviously seven months behind. He's still in his rehab program. He can not only play third base, second base, and the outfield. Um, I expect him to be a really good player before he leaves our program. And then Devin Foyle, the switch hitting freshman outfielder, has been outstanding uh, in our workouts so far. And you throw Blake Goldsberry in the mix, who's a right-handed pitcher and a freshman. You throw Jackson Goddard in there. It's a really good class. You mentioned speed earlier. Uh, who's a guy that could come off the bench late in the game for some speed, and then also late in the game for like a big at bat? Well, I think as far as pinch hitting type things, I think that's a role that Marcus Wheeler could be could be really successful in. Uh, Marcus had a really severe collision, broke his leg, had a pin place and a rod place in his leg. Does not run very good, 
but he has really good at bats. And, and uh, I think that's something that he could be, be good at. Rudy Carey could come off the bench and steal a second base against anybody. But I also think the guys that are sitting up here, every one of these guys is a really good runner. I mean, Kobe, Richie's goal, 15 stolen bases for Kobe, okay? And I go right along. Joe Maroney's a really good runner. And then you go right over there, Michael Tinsley, even though he plays catcher, one of the most athletic guys in the country, one of his plus tools is his ability to run. And then finally, the little guy over there in center field is, is a very good base runner as well. So we have really good team speed. Any other questions at all? I appreciate your time, guys. <laughs>